This fruit is so valuable, it's been dubbed green gold, and it's destined for China. At the end of the BRICS summit last year, the, the, work, the, the deal was signed to export avocados to China, so we now have access to China, but there's been a big process in between to meet all the requirements of the protocol that was agreed to, and uh, we're very close now to being able to send the first shipment to China. Derek Duncan is the CEO of a South African Fruit Growers Association and has been working with Chinese inspectors to open so-called green lanes to get avocado exports off the ground. China has long been the African continent's biggest trade partner, but the Asian giant exports some $60 billion more in goods to Africa each year than it imports. In South Africa's case, China exported $11 billion more than it imported in 2022, the most recent year for which figures are available. Because there's been a strong impetus from the Chinese as well to make sure that this deal happens because they're aware of that trade imbalance and that they need to be taking more exports from South Africa. South Africa also exports its agricultural produce to the EU and US, which are its third and fourth largest markets respectively, behind the African continent and China. Many of South Africa's agricultural products benefit from tariff-free access to the U.S. market under Washington's African Growth and Opportunity Act. The avocado deal with Beijing was made last year when South Africa hosted Chinese President Xi Jinping on a state visit alongside the summit of the BRICS Group of Emerging Economies. At the time, South Africa urged China to address the trade deficit. Experts say China is also expanding its imports of semi-processed agriculture from Africa to ensure food security and avoid price inflation. Lauren Johnston is an associate professor of China studies at the University of Sydney. Another kind of bigger geostrategic reason for the push on, on food exports is similar to kind of diversify the global agricultural supply chain. You know, you've had this pressure on China, you've got the soybean pressure from the US, you've got different pressures and trade tensions between Australia and China. As part of its agricultural push in Africa, China also imports soybean, citrus, wine and rooibos tea from South Africa, avocados and tea from Kenya, and coffee from Rwanda and Ethiopia. China's new ambassador to South Africa, Wu Peng, has promised measures are being taken to speed up the export of more agricultural products to China. The potential of this is huge, says Clive Garrett, marketing manager for ZZ2, a South African farming conglomerate which will soon be exporting its avocados to China. Until October in 2023, South Africa really could only export to Europe, a little bit to the Middle East. But now, since then, we've had Japan, China and India open to us. And these are very exciting markets because the per capita consumption in these markets is still incredibly low. So we see huge opportunities of going into these markets. According to industry estimates, there are some 300 million people in China earning enough to buy imported fruit. That can only be good news for farmers and workers here in this bucolic mountain town. Kate Bartlett, VIA News, Zanin, Limpopo, South Africa. At the end of the BRICS summit last year, the, the, work, the, the deal was signed to export avocados to China. So we now have access to China, but there's been a big process in between to meet all the requirements of the protocol that was agreed to. And uh, we're very close now to being able to send the first shipment to China. Because there's been a strong impetus from the Chinese as well to make sure that this deal happens because they're aware of that trade imbalance and that they need to be taking more exports from South Africa. Another kind of bigger geostrategic reason for the push on, on food exports is similar to kind of diversify the global agricultural supply chain. You know, you've had this pressure on China, you've got the soybean pressure from the US, you've got different pressures and trade tensions between Australia and China. Until October in 2023, South Africa really could only export to Europe, a little bit to the Middle East. But now, since then, we've had Japan, China and India open to us. And these are very exciting markets because the per capita consumption in these markets is still incredibly low. So we see huge opportunities of going into these markets.
Uganda's opposition party Forum for Democratic Change FDC is tagging Kenyan authorities hand in the brutal arrest and deportation of the party's members, after which they were slapped with terrorism charges. FDC's stalwarts had been used to police brutality in Uganda, including rough arrests and detention. But the brem for Kenya arose last week after dozens of FDC members were rounded up in Kisumu and forcibly returned to Uganda. After that, Ugandan security authorities justified the move by alleging that the group had been in Kenya to train as terrorists. When reached for comment on the alleged Kisumu arrest, Kenyan authorities denied playing a role in the incident, adding they had no idea the incident had happened. On Thursday, the party said it would officially protest to the Kenya High Commission in Kampala over what they termed as collusion between security agents in Kenya and Uganda to arrest their members who were attending a training in Kisumu. Katonga Function Party President Elias Surukwago said the group of 36 members had traveled by road to the Kenyan city. However, they were arrested by a combination of Ugandan and Kenyan security services and have been sent to Rosita prison on charges of terrorism. The group comprising 34 men and two women appeared on Monday before the Nakawa Chief Magistrates Court in Kampala. Police in Uganda claimed in court that the group traveled between July 22nd and 23rd, 2024 from various parts of Uganda to Kisumu to provide or receive terrorist training. Upon return from Kenya, the group was paraded before the media on July 24th, 2024 at Kororo Independence Grounds in Kampala, at which the external security organizations ISO and protocol officer Mr. Paul Mugisha informed journalists that the group was arrested in Kisumu for engaging in suspicious activities, adding that it was the Kenyan security which had told Uganda about the arrest before the group was returned to Kampala. They will be brought back to court on August 31st, 2024. Kisumu County Governor Anyang Nyongos condemned the arrest and called on the Kenyan security authorities to explain the circumstances. In a statement, the governor said the politicians had been lawfully allowed to enter Kenya by immigration officials to attend the meeting, adding that despite having no connections with the politicians, it was unfortunate such happened within his area of jurisdiction. As the governor of Kisumu, where the incident happened, he said, I challenge the Kenyan police to clarify if its officers were involved in the attack and barred deportation and hurried deportation of the Ugandans and the reason behind the incident. He asked the Kenyan police to explain their involvement in the arrest since Kenya abides by the provisions of the International Human Rights Charters and cannot be seen to curtail the rights of people. But it has got the party's stalwarts accusing Nairobi of preying into Uganda's brutal hands against opposition groups, Prophet Sa Nyongo said on Thursday.